there. I am on the air. Good afternoon, Moons fans. You're watching Moons Over Missouri at our new time, 1 o'clock p.m. I'm your host, Rhonda Trout, and with me is my twin sister, Teresa Fowler. Everybody. Good afternoon, my darling. Good to see you, sweetheart. Hmm. So how are you today, honey? Oh, just fine. My neck's a little stiff. I don't know if I slept wrong. It's just, you know, it's just I want to take my head and go, you know, and just pull it right off. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should see a chiropractor like I do. Oh, I'd have to but go. You know, they say care. most. Yeah, they say most people have neck problems because they're hunched over their computers. Yeah, that's true. Or they're hunched reading a book. Maybe we should play computers up in the air like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people so have it on their phones. let's go ahead and run in. Well, that's true. So they must have sore thumb syndrome. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's go right into our Acme Shameless Plugs. Are you blind as a bat about your glasses? And you're trying to put on makeup or tweeze that unsightly? white hair and I got the product for you. The Acme 10 times magnifying mirror. You look in the mirror and you see your regular face but you can't see what you're doing without your glasses on. Flip that sucker over and you got 10 times magnification. Can't and then see you look product. in there. Sorry, here we go. How's that? Much then better. you look in that mirror and so, say, holy crap, is that a blackhead? <laughs> Where do those white hairs come from? <laughs> oh my god, is that a wrinkle? So anyway, you want to take your glasses off so you can put on your makeup or whatever you need to do, man or woman. Run out and get yourself the 10 times magnify mirror today. You'll be glad you did. Do you live in Tornado Alley? Do you have funk, constant uh, tornadoes? Do you are, are you in the areas with, prone to earthquakes? If you get trapped in the basement, do you have the way of hearing weather or having someone hear you? If you don't, get yourself the Acme Weather Radio. Comes with a light, bright as can be, people can see you. Comes with this little button here, but I won't press it because I tested it early and I had two cats screaming and sticking out of my ceiling. Makes a loud noise if you are trapped, <laughs> people can hear you. FM AM radio. Get yours today. You don't want to be uh, caught with your pants down, so to speak, without this when the weather is hitting you. <laughs> I gotta try that now with my cat to see how she <laughs> reacts to it. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> she would not be a happy you know, cat. She, no, is it that bright? <laughs> no, the the is sound is very piercing. Oh, okay. So it's got like a siren to it. Yeah, not the. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, which, which one is it? No, that's, where's my light at? <laughs> yeah, that is. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm that's trying to turn it off. Our well, now it's bleaking. <laughs> Well, we have some interesting topics for you guys today, and I hope they are. Uh, there's a little bit of fluff, and we still have a continuation of the Ferguson story, but this time it's a good story. Teresa, why don't you take away our first topic? When you sneeze or someone else is sneeze, what is what what usually occurs? You say, "God bless you." Exactly. Well, we had a student get punished for saying that. At school, this That's outrageous. Story, yes, I know. This story is by Todd Starnes, and it was published in FoxNews.com. Uh, Corinda Turner was brought up right. She's the kind of kid who says yes, sir, and no, ma'am. She was raised right up, with good manners, as are prone to say around Dyersburg, Tennessee. So it was not out of character for Kendra to say "bless you" after a fellow classmate sneezed. But the common courtesy landed the 18-year-old in hot water. Kendra says she was rebuked by her teacher at Dyer County High School and thrown out of class for violating the teacher's ban on the words, bless you. 
she said that we're not going to have godly speaking in her class and that's when I said we have a constitutional right, Turner told Memphis Televi television station WMC. Another student sent the television station a photo taken inside the teacher's classroom showing a list of banned words. Among the censored words are dump, stupid, my bad, hang out, and bless you. She wrote about her incredible story on Facebook. It was then picked up by mom.com blog, and then as they say hey, these days, the story went viral. I stood mm -hmm. up and said, my pastor said, I have a constitutional right. First Amendment free of speech, Kendra wrote on Facebook. She said, not in my class, you don't. Kendra says she was tossed out of the class and sent to the principal's office where things apparently went from bad to worse. The assistant principal said, if I didn't want to respect my teacher's rules, then maybe my pastor should teach me because my freedom of speech and religion does not work at their school, she said. As you might imagine, the school has a very different take on what happened inside that classroom. We can't discuss discipline issues because of right to privacy of students, Assistant Principal Glenn Garner told the Dryersburg Gazette. But I can say that there are two sides to every story. Sometimes people spin things and turn them to make them seem one way. The Assistant Principal said Kendra was sent to in-school suspension as a matter of protocol. She was allowed to leave at the end of the class period. In this case, this was not a, a religious issue at all, but more of an issue the teacher felt was a distraction in her class, Garner told the newspaper. To be clear, the school would have us believe that a child telling a classmate, bless you, after a sneeze, somehow caused a classroom commotion so severe it warranted punishment. It's a good thing Kendra didn't offer her classmate a tissue. Kendra's pastor is among those not buying the school's explanation, and he's taken a public stand in defense of the young girl. I believe this young lady, said Stephen Weingart, the pastor of the Dyersburg First Assembly of God. Everything she said took place. Weingartner told me he's hoping students will lead a petition drive to force the school to overturn the classroom ban on the words, bless you. Christians have been told to be quiet, to shut up, he said. It's ridiculous. Everybody has a right to their beliefs. I'm glad Kendra stood up. Weingartner's wife told MWC that the teacher has issues with other students using the word bless you. There are several students that were talking about this particular faculty member there that was very demeaning to them in regard to the face she told the television station. Every now and then a story will land on my desk that seems too outrageous to be true. And to be certain there are two very different versions of what happened in that classroom but I'm prone to believe Kendra too. That's because Tuesday a school official tried to convince me this young lady was a troublemaker. They were clever with the words but that was the impression I received. That same school official told me that there was no word ban on the words bless you but a, ble but, a, but a classroom photograph proves otherwise. They said she was not punished but Kendra saw the slip of paper that ordered her to end school suspension. For whatever reason, the school will not explain why the teacher has an issue with the words bless you. This one is a head scratcher, folks, but one thing is clear. Religious tolerance is nothing to sneeze at. Nice pun, Tyler Todd. Uh, uh -huh. Excuse me, I was having issues with my earphones when you were talking. You know, this has gotten out of hand. Godly speech? What the hell? You know... <laughs> Things have gotten so different, and yes, I'm getting on my soapbox, watch out, since we were kids. Mm -hmm. You know, yes sir, yes ma'am, God blessed you has nothing to do with any kind of religion. It is a saying that we've been saying since day one when somebody sneezes. Mm -hmm. And we really need to find out why we say that, but you know, that's neither here or there. If it is a... Uh, English class where you were trying to teach the kids not to use certain expressions that I understand you know I use the word you know my bad or I know right you know this is just different mm -hmm. expressions that you get you know throughout the years I mean we say things now that was unheard of back in the day in the 70s and 80s <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, reprimanding a child, well, she's legally an adult, she's 18 years old, for saying bless you to somebody who is sneezing, 
and then try to tell somebody that it's wrong. We don't say godly words in class. This teacher and this principal, this entire school needs to be regulated and taken a real good look at by, by the school board. What other kinds of um, civil liberties or civil rights are they trying to take away from these kids? You know, they don't even get me started exactly. on the American flag. And saying bless you, yeah, saying bless you is not a classroom disruption. The teacher mm -hmm. herself disrupted her own class by taking this child, uh, this, this student to task for saying bless you. You know, I want to know why she doesn't want the word bless you saying in her class. You know, if she's got a personal problem with God or just saying bless you, that's on her. But to mm -hmm. take this child, send her to the principal's office, and then giving her an in-school suspension for that, as a mom, I would be hot. Mm -hmm. I really would be hot about this. And what is this protocol shit? Yes, I said it shit because I'm really not comfortable saying that on camera, but, you know, I say other things. So that's neither here or there. They should have revoked uh, this uh, in-school suspension because it was a load of crap. And then trying to put a spin on the story, like there's two sides to every story. Mm -hmm. You know what? As, as a substitute teacher, I am more inclined to listen to students than I would an adult. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, so students don't lie about stuff like that. Okay, there's that 1% that does. But, you know, this is totally out of hand. You know, I could go on and on about different subjects on this issue about civil liberties and civil rights. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this teacher needs to be reprimanded. This was it the principal or the vice principal? I think the story said it was the vice principal. Okay, he needs to be reprimanded. Why did she see the vice principal and not the principal? Maybe the principal was out that day. But then to try and uh, make it seem like that this child, she's still a child. She's under 21. You know, this this young lady is a troublemaker because now they're under the you know they're under the hot lights. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that you know more is probably going to come out in a story. Yeah, I need to keep an eye on I it. I will too, because you know stuff like that just makes me hot under the collar, and then you know I'm going to blow and get on my soapbox about it. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say on that. I'm going to put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> oh yes. You know, it's like our new slogan, slurp it, don't joke it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get those t-shirts and wear them around. <laughs> oh, my gosh, yes. Okay, what else do you have for us today? Well, as you know, there's been a lot of, you know, negative comments and reviews and criticisms coming out on Ferguson. But finally, there is a story out on um, Ferguson that, Gives you kind of a oh, about time. Another yeah. view of Ferguson: kindness, generosity. This story was written by Ashley Fance from CNN. Day after day, most of the images and stories from Ferguson, Missouri, has been depressing. The quiet Midwest suburb appears to have devolved into a place where armored vehicles patrol streets, people can't stop fighting, arrests are commonplace, and tear gas pollutes the air. But there was actually good happening in Ferguson, some extraordinary acts of kindness and generosity from people trying to hold their city together. Jamelia White, who lives in South Lewis County, walked a mile to give free water to protesters. We pulled together as a community to bring this, she said, so we can stay energized and keep walking because they're saying if we stand still, we're going to get locked up. When people were hit with tear gas Tuesday, she was there to help. She replaced the water in her bottles with milk to help wash the gas from people's eyes. Instructions mm -hmm. popped up on Twitter on how to help people who had been tear gassed. Since the violence began, the Canfield Green Apartments have been tough to get into and out of. Micah Brown was shot nearby and many of the clashes have happened near that spot. So law enforcement has sometimes blocked the main entrance road. That's left residents, including those with babies and young children, without food and other necessities. But volunteers have come by and dropped off free groceries. Volunteers also grilled hundreds of hot dogs and gave them away to anyone who wanted them, including law enforcement. Domino's helped out, handed out free pizzas to demonstrators. There awesome. are others 
who offered rides to people who, because of the chaos at night, were either unable to back to get back to the cars or to find a way home. One man who received a ride tweeted the woman who helped him to stay, say thanks. Though that this was a disheartening destruction of Ferguson as many looted, some people have bravely stood firm outside shops acting as guards to protect the stores. Some in the crowd of protesters locked arms in solidarity to, in order to block those who wanted to cause havoc. People opened their homes to strangers to offer them a safe place to be for a moment or for food or just conversation. Some community leaders tirelessly tried to talk down angry residents, telling them that clashing with the police was not the answer. And in the light of day, volunteers came out to clean the streets. You can imagine with all those gas canisters and um, looting and stuff like that, this broken glass and garbage mm -hmm. all over the place. Auto mechanic Gary Park lives near the spot where Braun was killed by a Ferguson police officer August 9th. The St. Louis post-dispatch talked to Park and he and others have tried to clean up the streets that days later looters had ravaged. I needed to come out today just to get stability, the 34-year-old said. I wanted some encouragement. Park belongs to the Passage Community Church in Florissant, Missouri, the newspaper said, which worked with other local congregations to pick up trash and pieces of destroyed property. While they tried to restore some appearance of order and normality, teachers in Ferguson tried to do the same. Classes have been canceled in the town since the violence began. Schools are scheduled to open on August 25th. Joined by volunteers, several teachers stood outside the Ferguson Public Library and waved signs this week that read, Teachers here to teach and students welcome, the St. Louis Riverfront Times reported. Children were learning science and math at different tables where other ones, others drew. One child, the paper reported, made a poster that read, Stop the violence, let kids go back to school. I like that. Yeah. You know, if, this has gone too far. Yeah. If people can come together and protest and destroy their own neighborhoods, those very same people should go out and clean up after themselves. If they cause the mess, mm -hmm. they should clean it. You know, it's not like you got street sweepers that come down every day. And I'm really yeah. glad to see that, you know, the congregations are coming together and uh, people in the community are cleaning up after those. Mm -hmm. You know, teachers are, you know, trying to, you know, teach students there in the library. So it, it's it's nice to see the you know, the other side of this conflict there in Ferguson. And I'm hoping to see more, you know, feel-good stories out of it. Yeah, I'd like to see that too. Um... I was going to say, um, it's time to start healing, and cleaning up the streets is a good step. Offer to help uh, the storekeepers that were looted and broken into, and and help them clean up clean up the mess, and let's get the neighborhood back together. Um, think about those people who haven't been uh, haven't been able to get out, especially your senior citizens. Uh, make sure that they have enough water. Make sure they have food if they have any injuries. Neighborhoods helping neighborhoods. Neighbors helping neighbors. And mm -hmm. um, regardless of what went on with Brown's death, it is time to help the family heal. Let the community so, heal too. Instead of turning this guy into a martyr, because there's so many pros and cons about the story, offer to help the family out. Um, cut their lawn, help trim bushes, plant flowers so the family can grieve. You know, you can do it in the name of, um, what's his name, Michael? Michael Brown. Michael Brown. You know, forget all about what's going on with him. This is about the family. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you to be there for the family, get rid of all this anger and, and paranoia you know, this is a racial issue, this is a civil liberty issue. No, this is a neighborhood issue now. Go out, help your neighbors, clean up this mess, and let's get back to life. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to say on that. Yeah, check on your neighbors. You know, you know who they are. You see them every day. Check out the elderly. Check out the single moms with children, uh, veterans, 
you know, you know who's on your block, you know who's in your building if you live in a big apartment building. Start talking to each other. Find out who's, you know, who needs what and let the healing begin. Amen. Oh, I just said a godly word. <laughs> <laughs> And again, oh, if you're bad. watching, we are glad you're watching. And guess what? My cheer, I changed it. It doesn't squeak. <laughs> I know that bothered you yesterday. <laughs> Get the WD-40 on that darn thing. <laughs> no, we have to use Pam. <laughs> oh, well, that's right. Got to use our Acme Pam. <laughs> Do you remember when we took typing in high school? Oh, yes. I loved it. Mm -hmm. And after a sentence, you most have to, you're supposed to do those two spaces two before spaces. you get another sentence, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That went way the dodo you know, bird. Yeah, we've been doing it all wrong. You're not supposed to put two spaces behind a period anymore. This story is by, by Farhad Manyo. I hope I said it right. Space invaders. Why you should never ever use two spaces after a period. Can I let you on a like secret? <laughs> Typing two spaces after a period is totally, completely, utterly, and inarguably wrong. <gasps> oh my god, really? I've been doing it wrong? <laughs> and yet people who use two spaces are everywhere. They're ugly error crossing every social boundary of class, education, and taste. You'd expect, for instance, that everyone savvy enough to read Slate would know the proper rules of typing. But you'd be wrong. Every third email I get from readers includes the two-space error. And editing letters of Dear Farhad, my occasional tech advice column, I removed enough space, extra spaces to fill my forthcoming volume of melancholy epic poetry, The Emptiness Within. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fun alert! The public relations profession is a... Yeah. The public relations profession is similarly ignorant. I've received press releases and correspondence from the biggest companies in the world that are riddled with extra spaces. Some of my best friends have irredeemable two spacers too, and even my wife has been known to use an unnecessary extra space every now and then, though she points out that she does so only when writing to other two spacers just to make them happy. <laughs> <coughs> He the goes on to say, spacers. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I'm a two spacer, are you? Join our help <laughs> class. <laughs> two spacers, anonymous. There <laughs> <laughs> you go. <laughs> yes, I know I've been anonymous wrong. What galls me about two spacers isn't just their numbers, it's their certainty that they're right. Over Thanksgiving dinner last year, I asked people what they considered to be the correct number of spaces between sentences. The diners include doctors, computer programmers, and other highly accomplished professionals. Everyone, everyone said it was a proper to use two spaces. Some people admittedly, uh, some people admitted to slipping sometimes and using a single space, but when writing something formal, they were always careful to use two. Others explained they mostly used a single space but felt guilty for violating the two space rule. <laughs> rule. Still others said they used two spaces all the time and they were thrilled to be so proper. When I pointed it out they were doing it wrong, that in fact the correct way to end a sentence is with a period followed by a single proud beautiful space, the table balked. Who says two spaces is wrong? They wanted to know. Typographers, that's who. Typographers, what the heck is that? Typographers, typographers are people who. <laughs> typographers, typ did I say it wrong? Yeah. Well, no, excuse me. One of the words. Hey, no comments from the peanut gallery over there. <laughs> The people who study and design the typewritten word decided long ago that we should use one space, not two, between sentences. That convention was not arrived at casually. James Felici, author of The Complete Manual of Topography, points out that the early history of type is one of the inconsistent spacing. 
Hundreds of years ago, some typesetters would end sentences with a double space, others would use a single space, and a few renegades would use three or four spaces. Inconsistently reigned in all facets of written communication, there were few conventions regarding spelling, punctuation, character design, and ways to add emphasis to time. But as typesetting became more widespread, its practitioners began to adopt best, adopt best practices. Felice writes that typesetters in Europe began to settle on a single space around the early 20th century. America followed soon after. Every modern topographer agrees on the one space rule. It's one of the mechanical rules of the profession. In the same way that waiters know that the salad fork goes to the left of the dinner fork and fashion designers know to put the men's shirt buttons on the right and women's on the left. Okay. <laughs> Every major style guide, including the Modern Language Association's type manual and the Chicago Manual of Style, prescribes a single space after a period. The Publications Manual of the American Psycholo Psychological Association, used widely in the social sciences, allows for two spaces in draft manuscripts, but recommends one space in published work. Most ordinary people would know the one space rule too if it, a, if it weren't for a quirk of history. In the middle of the last century, a now outmoded technology, outmoded, the manual <laughs> typewriter. Remember those? The manual typewriter? He's right in there on them American workplace. To accommodate that machine's shortcomings, everyone began to type wrong. And even though we no longer use typewriters, if you still do, good for you. We all still type like we do. Also see the persistence of the dreaded caps lock key. <gasps> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> the problem with Your password does not compute. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with typewriters was that they use monospace type. That is, every character occupied an equal amount of horizontal space. This bucked a long tradition of proportional typesetting in which skinny letters like I or 1 were given less space than fat ones like W or M. Monospace type gives you text that looks loose and uneven. There's even a lot of white space between characters and words, so it's more difficult to spot the spaces between sentences immediately. Hence the adoption of the two-space rule. On a typewriter, an extra space after the sentence makes text easier to read. Here's the thing now. Monospaced fonts went out in the 1970s. First electric typewriters, <laughs> then computers began to offer people ways to create text using proportional fonts. Today, nearly every font on your PC is proportional. Courier is the one major exception. Because we've all switched to modern fonts, adding two spaces after a period no longer enhances readability, topographers say. It diminishes it. <clears throat> wow, this, this goes on and on and on, at least for another four par paragraphs. So basically what we're, this, they're saying is if you're going to type on the computer or on your laptop and you're no longer using the typewriter, you no longer need to put two spaces behind a sentence before you start a new sentence. So stop that. No, 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 no. <laughs> but I'm a two-spacer rebel. I know. <laughs> We learned in the 80s and how to type. You know, do you remember where we had to count every letter and every space in between them to make uh, columns? Oh, that was a pain in the ass. Yes, I don't, <laughs> I don't think they even teach that in uh, typing classes anymore. No, no, because it's called keyboarding now and they do everything on the computer. You know, yep. so us old folks, <clears throat> you know. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't know how good you have it. <laughs> I have to admit, yesterday uh, when I was typing up uh, the, the articles out of the uh, Dixon Pilot into the hometown uh, Dixon, Missouri page, I put one space behind the periods. But I had to, I kept catching myself by putting two, and then I had to backspace. And it's, it's 
once you've learned something, it's really hard to break that habit and do something new. Yeah, you know, and there's that saying, you know, it takes seven days to create a habit. I think it's right. <laughs> but only one to break it. That's not true. <laughs> We've been brainwashed by the curriculum of our old schools. <laughs> so, honey, you know, I think subconsciously I stopped doing the two spaces because, you know, your fingers are flying over the keys. You don't want to, you know, go da da. So, anyway, we had fun. But now yeah. computers have taken over our lives. Yeah. We're drones. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So, it's that time, my darlings. Get out your coffee mugs, your glasses, your shot glasses. Pretend you have coffee in them, you know, or your vodka in your coffee cup. Nobody's going to know. You got a little tequila, you got some strawberry daiquiri, put it in your coffee pot. Nobody's going to know but you, right? <laughs> strawberry daiquiri. So, repeat Ooh. after me. No, no, I mean in the empty coffee cup. Okay. <laughs> and speaking of coffee cups. You know, we have these handy-dandy Moons of Missouri coffee mugs that we created just for you. And you can find this at Zazzle.com under the store Moons of Missouri. We also have t-shirts now and playing cards and keychains. Check it out today. All right. Repeat after me. I love coffee hot. I like coffee hot. I like, I like coffee, coffee cold. cold. I like I coffee, like coffee in the the hot. hot. One, One day, day old. old. Hmm. Now, if you didn't slurp, you did it wrong. <laughs> Reverse this tape. <laughs> do it again. <laughs> Watch our video over and do it right the first time. Or, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Do it the second time. <laughs> anyway, you've been watching Moons of Missouri. I'm your host, Rhonda Trout. With me is my darling twin sister, Teresa Fowler. We had fun. We hope you did too. See you soon. Bye-bye now. <laughs>